Just as you can find a new adventure and a new love after your first marriage, so can you find a new life in a foreign land. For me, for now, it's South America. My name is Lauren Lau, and this is my adventure in Grand Colombia. Welcome back to Grand Columbia Channel. These are my videos about my life, adventures, experiences in Ecuador and Colombia, and possibly some other countries in the future. Today's video isn't really about Colombia or Ecuador though, although there's a connection, and I'll get into it in a bit. But today is Thursday, Thursday before Easter Sunday, and I had to go shopping today and the streets are almost empty. Buses are few and far between. Taxis are everywhere, but it's really quiet out there. And I'm thinking, what is it? What? Oh yeah, they, they start their Easter week early. I mean, you would think it would start on Good Friday, but no, started today. I guess we'll call it Decent Thursday. And then tomorrow can be Good Friday. Now, without going into details, I would just make a broad statement that music has been a big part of my life. Picked up a guitar at age 14, played in a band, you know, it was about getting chicks. It wasn't it for everybody. But really got interested in it. Uh, got hooked on early blues, B.B. Uh, King, Muddy Waters. And my taste in music was probably pretty eclectic, at least at the time with all the people that I knew, they thought I was kind of weird. I mean, of course, I love the Beatles. And there were a lot of pop songs that I really liked, which, you know, today is turning out to be classic music because it was so good. But I was really also into pretty much anything I could find that I found interest in. I would buy albums just in hopes that it would turn into a gem. That's how I got my first Frank Zappa taste. I love Frank Zappa and I just grabbed an album one time and listened. I was fascinated and I was addicted right up until his death to Frank Zappa. It was very sad uh, when he died. But I listened to guys like David Bromberg and most of you are going to go, who? What? Uh, love David Bromberg music. Leon Redbone. I mean, how can you not love that guy? A hey, misbehaving. Music that my peers thought it was corny, didn't understand it because they hadn't heard it on the radio for 50,000 times. You know, it just it didn't sink into them. So I've always liked music and I would say eclectic taste. Now you have to remember back in the day, back in my day, everything was kind of, it was this or this. You know, I like Beatles. Well, that meant you probably are not supposed to like the Stones, but I like the Stones. But it was like Beatles versus the Stones. You know, Pepsi versus Coke, Chevy versus Ford. I mean, you're a Ford guy or you're a Chevy guy. You're not supposed to be both. So it was weird times back then, you know, life was black and white. It, you know, people say, well, life was much simpler then. Yeah, probably, it probably was. But one type of music I never liked was country music. As a matter of fact, it became this thing for me to say, I hate country music. I mean, it was like a badge that I would wear, you know, it was, you get these, uh, Boy Scout campfire badge and you know how to make a splint and I hate country music. I'm not exactly sure why. I have distant memory of certain things like riding in the car and being forced to listen to Patsy Cline and some you know other people that to this day I really don't care for. I don't know if that was it. I do remember getting into an argument with my mother over country music versus the trash that they make nowadays, you know, talking about Beatles. Now, of course, with the Beatles, I had a vociferous defense of those people because I love them. But when I moved to Ecuador and I had all that time, particularly after the first year and I moved to Hidon, where I was in my little 
peaceful enclave. <laughs> and I, you know, it was my hermit time. I'm not exactly sure why, but I started listening to Johnny Cash. Maybe, maybe I watched the movie Johnny Cash again and I just started thinking about it. But I started listening to Johnny Cash and hearing his music, I had a whole new appreciation for the talent of the man. And somewhere buried deep into my memory, and if you saw a couple videos back in that time when I was doing this exploration about where and why, how and why, somewhere buried there was the memory of when I was a kid, about 10, 11 years old, my mother married, uh, re remarried, so I had a stepfather, and his parents didn't live that far from where I lived. And they had a horse ranch, any 50, 60 horses, and people would come out on the weekends and pay them to go riding up into the hills. And I would go down sometimes and have to help take care of the horses. On weekends in the summer, they had barn dances. These were square dances. And it was in one of their barns. It was in the upstairs part of the barn where downstairs, the ground level, were all these, uh, you know, a lot of horses. And there was another barn. But so in this barn on the weekend, they would invite these country bands. And there would be like a little concert and square dancing would go on and, and country dancing. I, I don't know about that stuff. But whatever they danced there was dancing. I do remember some square dancing but it wasn't only square dancing. Well I recall one time uh, a lot of hay bales not contrived, not staged, it was just a working barn and I remember chasing this girl around who I don't even recall to this day and I don't know at the time that I even knew why I was chasing her around. It just seemed like I should be chasing a girl around. and. Up on the stage comes this guy who really caught my eye and he went back and I sat down on a bale of hay because he had black pants and he had a black shirt and he had black sunglasses and it was at night. I mean, who wears sunglasses at night? And the band, and he, he's talking, he had this really low voice and it, it, it just really caught my attention. And then he started playing music and, I, and, and even at the age I was at, I mean, this was so much better than a lot of the other things on other weekends that I would hear. But the just the persona of the guy, I mean, who wear, it was like a costume. I mean, who does that? And I couldn't get over the sunglasses. Uh, so this memory comes back, well, of course, I'm sure you realize, I'm talking about Johnny Cash. As a kid, I saw Johnny Cash. Well, my step-grandparents because they were big in rodeo and one of their sons was uh, uh, a judge at national rodeos. He had connections to all these Nashville country and western people and a lot of them came around. I mean, the, uh, do you remember Minnie Pearl wore that flat brimmed hat that had a price tag hanging off it? Well, she was a personal friend and they would come out and once a year they had a country and western jamboree. That was the name of it, the Double Diamond Ranch Country and Western Jamboree. And all of these country stars who I didn't know anything about, they were all there. They were all there. It was a huge event. And this memory came about because I started listening to Johnny Cash. And I realized that I appreciated that music and it wasn't just Oh, country music I hate because it isn't just one music, right? And there were others. I remembered this, I don't know where it came from. I, I, I don't recall even now, it was just a couple years ago, the name Marty Robbins. I, I know that name, I know Marty Robbins. So I asked Alexa to play Marty Robbins. Alexa, play Marty Robbins. Shuffling songs by Marty Robbins on Amazon Music. To the town of Alfreda, wrote a stranger one fine day. Alexa, pause. And it 
triggered another memory. And this was a good memory. Now that stepfather, he had a house. Behind the house was this huge junkyard. There were 2,000 to 3,000 cars in this junkyard. And so many were vintage, old, classic cars today. And that's where I worked from the time I was 10 years old. I would work in that junkyard. He had this house that it had this beautiful cedar paneling in the living room. And it had a big, big, big stone fireplace. It was very country western motif. But in there, he taught me how to reload bullets. And so I would sit at these little pieces of bench equipment and put the, you know, weigh out the gunpowder and put in the primer and press in the round into the shell. And while I would do that, I would listen to his music. And this one album that I listened to was Marty Robbins. And I loved that music. They were stories. They were Western stories. And a couple of the songs were very vivid about a guy getting shot. And, and the words portrayed this image of, you know, the life leaving him and almost a surreal, you know, fade to fog sort of way. And it was always over the girl that he loved and tried to get back to her and he, he would suffer through a hailstorm of bullets for the sake of his love. And the music, the stories were spellbinding and different. And I love that music. And that was considered to be country and western that, you know, that I was supposed to hate. But I, I just didn't even look at it that way. And I go back, and not just the, the songs that I remember, but I start looking at his other music. And now I'm looking at Willie Nelson. Always avoided it. I never knew. I don't even, I'm not even sure why it's called country music, to be honest with you. Because it seems like a lot of his songs, or at least several that I've listened to, are about pot about weed, about marijuana, about getting high. Uh, but he's got a lot of love songs. He's got a lot of story songs, emotional songs. And I guess I really like story songs. David Bromberg, if you've never heard of the guy, look him up. He's got some amazing music, but he's got some really good storytelling music. And so I guess the bottom line is my time down here is not just spent with an adventure out walking the streets, out looking around, but it's an adventure of the mind, of looking at things a different way, go back and exploring certain things from many years ago that are just, it's like a, it's like a thread that you pull on a shirt and next thing you know, you could unravel the whole thing. It's amazing what you can do with your life when you've got peace and tranquility going on. It's not boredom to me. It's not like I don't know what to do with myself and my life is useless. I think that workaholic mode that I've always had would never allow that anyway. But aside from being out and active and meeting so many people, but mentally I'm very active down here. I have time for it. When you're when you're doing the grind, when you're up there, up there, you know what we're talking about. And every day is a grind to meet the bills, to deal all the stuff you gotta deal with. You know, I got jury duty, I've got you know your mind is so focused on living day to day that there's no room anymore for the other things that life can be. And down here, I have the freedom to do what... If I want to sit here for the next three days and do nothing but listen to Willie Nelson songs, guess what? I can do that. Now, I don't want to do that, but I have the time to do it when I feel like it. And I absolutely love that freedom to live life the way I want to live it. So that's all I got to say today. If you hung in there up till now, I really appreciate it. I appreciate all the supporters, the subscribers. 
don't forget this year I'm trying to hit 10,000 so if you're not subscribed please subscribe feel free to share these videos get them out there um, if you think they're going to be of use to anybody uh, by all means support the channel on patreon I need that to keep doing the things that I'm doing I've got to go fund me and last thing I'll mention is I am doing this consulting work if you're coming here you need some help you've got questions if you're thinking about Ecuador or Colombia I'm doing Skype calls all the information is down in the description uh, description follow it all the way down and you'll find uh, various things that I can do for you uh, you know help me make this channel a really valuable resource I hope you have a great Easter and I'll see you later